Welcome back. Very interesting day. We are taking a deep dive into the real estate market. But today we actually have a practitioner to help us understand what has that opportunity looked like. And they're actually listed on the NSC. And this is Homes Africa. We have the CEO, Mr. Dan Awendo, with us. Good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon, Bida. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Give us an overview. What is When somebody talks about Home Africa, what are we talking about? So we're talking about a company that uh, initially was started like a charmer. Okay. Uh, similar minds coming together to set up a company because we thought that individually there are some things we can do but as a, as a team, as a group, uh, you can do much more. Okay. This is how Home Africa was set up initially. So we set it up but uh, as the company continued to engage in, uh, engage in projects, we realized that you need capital, you need to uh, create liquidity for your shares. Uh, and so it was necessary to even start looking at, uh, at uh, listing. Okay. Initially, we were targeting to go into the OTC markets. That I think there are a couple in the market. And then subsequently, we realized even OTC is, uh, is uh, limiting. Just go on to the gems market. Well, just go big or go home. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then when is this Chama started? So within the same, uh, 11 years ago, 11 years um, ago. two years before that, we started uh, going around looking for people who are of the same mind and who can raise about two million shillings okay. over a two-year period All right. to set up this business. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it is only about two years later that we started engaging in, in projects. In projects. Right. So by the time you were coming to the market, how big was your portfolio and what was the value of that? Our biggest uh, uh, project at the time was Morningside Office Park, which okay. is an office uh, building that uh, we had created. We have, uh, we have about 34 uh, office suites. Okay. And so we were in the market selling them. We built it and we were selling them. And that was our primary project. But by the time we came to the stock market, we had already acquired um, uh, 774 acres of land in uh, Kiambu okay. uh, to put up a mega golf estate, which was going to be our signature project uh, going, going forward. Okay. Yes. So when you're coming at, uh, to the stock exchange, do you have a, a semblance of what the net asset value was? Um, well, at, at the time, I think we were, we were somewhere around um, two billion. Two billion. Yes. And what is it today? No, now it's come down, okay. and, uh, and I'll explain why. Okay. Okay. Uh, because ours uh, is a real estate development company. Okay. As a real estate development company, the turnaround process for your projects are long term. So over the long term, you have you're completing the project in piecemeal. That's all how projects goes. So in the initial stages, you can't necessarily post any profits because you're investing in That's the project. True. You're, That's you're, true. You're creating the product. And so the expenses of that particular year would all be incurred in that particular year and therefore reported in that year. The, the investment in the infrastructure goes into the project. It's also reported as expense to a large extent in the project. So you can't show any profits. The profits of a long-term project come much later. Okay. Now, we are about uh, six years or seven years into our largest project, which is MIGA. So until we finish the project in the next maybe three years, we'll still not be able to see those projects. And that's so in the, in the financials, the losses that you see in the initial yes, period yes. will obviously uh, uh, bite into the, what you call the net asset value okay. of the company. I don't know if our graphics team can help us put up the income statements so that we can just see the profit, uh, the trajectory of profits. Okay, but just before we get into the deep dive on the numbers, yes. help us ex uh, understand. So you have come and you've decided you want to list. How has that journey been? Because I know the NSC keeps coming and saying there's an opportunity to raise capital, mm -hmm. uh, be, be a, there, there are benefits to being a public company. Right. How has that been from the beginning up until now? So they, they are, yes, there are benefits, but there are also some uh, uh, disadvantages, um, both of which uh, we, I think is important for prospects to engage with. Uh, so let me start with the advantages. Okay. So first of all, the first thing that it help, helped us do was to create liquidity for our shareholders. So obviously, shareholders in a private company don't have the kind of liquidity that uh, shareholders in a public company will have. Uh, we're able to trade our shares and sell and buy shares on the stock exchange without limitations. Okay. Secondly, the market gives you the, the ability to raise capital, long-term capital, and sometimes a much better structured. So did you raise capital when you were coming to the NSC? Yes, How we, much we did, did you raise, raise a bond of five, 500, uh, 500, 500 million. million. Yes. And then did but it... But it was a bond. It, it, was, was, not, a bond. it was not an IPO cash. Okay. Of, yeah, we, we listed by introduction. And have you already paid back the bond? 
No, it's, it's coming uh, for payment at the end of this year. At the end of this year. Yes. And then when the liquidity was created, did some of the existing Chama members actually use this opportunity to exit this Chama? Oh, yes. yes? We, uh, because uh, sh shareholders were looking to especially uh, divest the, their initial investment. Remember, okay. everybody put in about 2 million shares. Yes. So a lot of the investors uh, looked to bring out the 2 million and keep the rest uh, for the long term. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you can answer this, but I'm very curious. So if I put in 2 million when the Chama was starting and, uh, and, and we put up uh, Morningside, when it came to the listing, how much was that 2 million at the point of, at the next day of, of listing, the day that? Uh, next day of listing, I think we were talking about... Uh, Maybe 50 million. 50? Yes. Oh, wow. So there's actually a benefit to the NSC, oh, yeah, yeah, depending yeah, on how you... Wow. 2 million to 50 million. Yeah, and, when, and from the point of uh, actually starting the Chama to listing, how many years were those? That was about uh, six years. Six years. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Why was, where was I? I'm wondering. <laughs> so six years, two million to 50 million. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's a fantastic return. Yeah. But then what has been the, the experience after listing? So now? after listing, obviously, um, uh, there is a lot more pressure okay. to show profits. And for a type of company, that becomes a very difficult thing to engage with. Because as I explained, you don't make profits in a real estate development company in the initial parts of your project. These profits will come down the road. And if you look at the balance sheet, and I hope we can spend a bit of time on that, okay. most of our profit is sitting in the balance sheet, even today. So if someone is keen to understand the balance sheet and the structure of a balance sheet, they will see where the profits are sitting. Now, the problem with the pressure of profitability on, an, on a monthly, on, an, on a six monthly basis or even annual basis okay. is that the perception of the investment, investing public then starts coming negative. And yes. of course, it affects your, your share price. Because I'm just looking here and seeing that the last reported uh, number was a 346 million loss. Yes. But then you're saying we are probably looking at the wrong number if you're looking at price to income or, right. or price to earnings ratio right. as, as a way of valuing this company. Right. Right. So maybe we should, put, can we please uh, bring up the balance sheet then we ca you can help us understand where's this opportunity and value sitting? The, as, as the balance sheet is coming up. So help us understand because when you're looking at this, if this is a real estate company, then really you're focusing on the net asset value. Right. So how has the net asset value then evolved over the last 11 years? Let me, let me specifically talk about uh, some two numbers okay. that, that, are in, that both are, well, one is in the income statement and mm -hmm. the other one is in the balance sheet. So if you look at the income statement, we have a figure called revenue, which yes. everybody calls sales. Yes. Which is sales also to us. But our sales are determined by the level of completion of our project. So if, for instance, last year, uh, and a, a typical example is last year, we made sales of about 540 million. Okay. But that 540 million, you will not be able to see it in our income statement. All right. What you will see in the income statement is about 108. Wow, why? Because the 508, 540 must be adjusted against okay. the level of percentage of completion of my project. Wow, that's an accounting. Yes. Mr. Mina or Exactly. So <laughs> okay. that's number one. Number yes. two, mm -hmm. any sale that I make mm -hmm. in the year, and by the way, that's what I wake up to do every day. I wow. go to the market to sell. Wow. Any sale that I make, so long as I've not been fully paid for it. Yes. And you know, we're talking about a parcel of land that is six million, seven million shillings. So long as I have not received the last 100,000 shillings, then I cannot can't. call it sales. Goodness, okay. That's so it goes into the balance sheet. Okay. Secondly, if I don't issue a lease, even if someone has fully paid okay. and I've not given them a lease, I still cannot take that as, as revenue. So it means my revenue is always at their disadvantage of these two types of things. Okay. Percentage of completion, wow. uh, leases and completion of payment. So Dan, how are you funding your expenses? Because you can't say that I will like, expend 5% because I have incurred 5% of a sale. Good question. Uh, funding of expenses is done in two ways. Number one is in a typical P&L income statement. So in my normal P&L statement, you will see losses. That's why you're seeing the losses because yes. my expenses, 100% of my expenses are in there. But my revenue has been subjected to limitation. Okay. Secondly, those expenses are incurred in cash. So cash-wise, I have the cash because I'm selling during the year. And the, as I told you the example, 540 million. So maybe 300 of that I received in cash. Yes. So I use that to pay my expenses. Okay. So that gives me the, um, the, the, the moving forward, ability to continue moving forward, wow. investing in a project that I have. So then, Dan, if you're saying that the financials, uh, sorry, maybe our graphics team, thank you for the cash flow statement. If it's possible, we can look at the balance sheet. 
so that we can be able to demystify this opportunity. Yes. So that what you're saying is, if we analyze you based on your last reported numbers, we could stand the risk of losing on the opportunity. Absolutely. So you're Absolutely. saying that what then we need to focus on the balance sheet. What nine yes. item do we need to be looking out for? Three things you need to look out for in okay. the balance sheet. Number one, there's a figure called deferred income. Okay. So I gave you the example of 540 million shillings in sales. All right. Vis-a-vis -vis 108 million shillings that I reported. Yes. What is the difference? Okay. Deferred income. Deferred so income. So it goes into my into my balance sheet as deferred income, which means in the future, as I complete my, my, my project, all that will transfer into the revenue account. So then when, what's the timeline of now um, actually monetizing your deferred income? I think income? that's maybe two, three years now. Three years. Yes. So we look at deferred income and then we say that's three years out. All of that okay. will come into, into, the, into, the, into the revenue. Okay. By the way, I don't have to do any additional work. Okay. I don't have to do any new sales. That is sale that is already made. Yes. It's going to transfer into the PL. Okay, so deferred income is the first thing. So the, the second item you need to look at is, is, is something called deposit for sales. So I mentioned earlier that any sale that I make, so long as I have not been paid for it in full, mm -hmm. the whole of that sale will show up in the balance sheet as deposit for sales. Okay. So if you look at the balance sheet, I think currently we have something like 1.5, 1.6 billion shillings of deposits that I have put in there in the balance sheet that actually belong in the revenue account. Okay. So deferred income is almost a billion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, the deposit for sales is also an, is another 1.5 billion. So a billion is so 1.5, okay. that's a total of 2.5 billion shillings All right. of sales I have already made. Okay. But I have not been able to recognize. Wow. The final number you need to look at is uh, inventory. Inventory. Inventory means what do I have in my land bank? What do I have to sell? in the future. That shows the assets that I'm sitting on. About 3.9 billion shillings. So 3.7, 3.9 billion 3 shillings. 3.9 billion. Remember that that as asset is valued at costs. Now MIGA, I bought MIGA seven, eight years ago. Is MIGA complete? It's not complete. Okay. We are at 46% completion. That's okay. part of the problem we are facing because we are, the, our completion rate is only at 46%. All right. So at 3.9 billion, the, the, the book value is registered or reported at cost. Okay. The market value of that asset has not been mentioned anywhere in the financials. Okay. So, I mean, I can see, I see where you're coming from, but I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate and saying my exposure to you and your projects as a company is largely in the stock market. Right. In the stock market. So I'm coming in as a shareholder and I'm looking at it and saying, I'm looking at the price and the possible dividend that right. I could actually get from right. this particular asset. Right. That's, that's what I'm focusing on. Right. So how do I reconcile this? Because I, I, I completely hear you and I, I mean, I, I must uh, admit that I have never really focused on these three key items. Mm -hmm. But put simply, I have bought your stock. Mm -hmm. Maybe I bought it when you came to the market. Mm -hmm. I have lost money. Mm -hmm. are, are you able to pay me a dividend? I mean, what, how do I actually reconcile the fact that I'm sitting at a stock that is not necessarily generating a revenue for me mm -hmm. as an investor? No, first of all, as an investor in a real estate development company, yes. I think yeah. what we first need to understand is that you have invested long term yes. in long term projects. So expectation of short term revenue, short term dividend is outside the expectation of a real estate developer. Wow. Even if you're building your own house, it will take you two years anyway. Okay, done. Hold on to that very passionate conversation yes. there. We take a very short break. Closing bell. The NSC has just closed. See you shortly.